The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lead to Transform webinar, Why We Fail at Change. This is one in a series of webinars where we connect for 45 minutes to an hour to bring to life the challenges we see in the market and what to do about them. We have invited Fran Cherney, Axilens Managing Director, who has been sharing this content with our clients during the last year and gotten great feedback. And we thought it would be really good to share it with a larger audience. During the webinar, He'll engage in a dialogue on how to really make change happen. He'll talk about the three levels of change and how to identify patterns and share some easy to apply tips to get you started. We will host a Q&A at the end of the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can use the questions application in the side panel and we will answer them later in the call. So with that, I hand it over to you, Fran. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, actually, I'm going to put on my camera at least for 10 seconds to say hi. Uh, I feel so I'm more used to give this talk about this content, uh, I would say, with a lot of people. Um, and it's a bit weird for me actually to connect through um, online, I would say. So it's also a learning experience for, for me. So I'm going to turn off the camera when I do the presentation and maybe put it back uh, when we do the Q&A. OK, uh, just some comments about the presentation. Uh, well, first of all, I hope you enjoy it and you find it valuable. Um, but mainly, um, there are going to be some times we're going to be asking you to participate in some way, although maybe you will not be actively be sharing at that time. So please, you know, as much as you participate, you can write down some things there, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you find as responses to the questions I'm going to be putting. That's going to help, I think, you go through the presentation in a way that is more engaging for you because you make it more your own story, I would say. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna kick off um, from here. Good, so I think the invitation, it's uh, why we fail at change, changing to learn, learning to change. Um, and I assume that if you are here, it's because there's something in your life or something in your team or in your organization that you find uh, that is, not working as expected or you would like to develop, at least something you would like to change. Uh, and it's not working as you as you want. Um, so, but the, the first thing, um, and well, uh, this was my introduction, but the, the first thing is I would like to change the subject. I want to move from why we feel a change to making change happen. Uh, so I want to move from, um, in a way, and I hope that through this presentation, you can connect the, the two things, you know, because if we understand what is it, what, what the blockers are, what is it coming on the way, maybe it's gonna be easier for us to really start making something different. So let's dive into, into it. The, one of the questions I always, I would say, uh, ask is why we are talking about this topic? And, and I want to, I would say, bring the context in which we are in, at least what we find, you know, um, uh, working with organizations, uh, big organizations, and actually I would say everywhere these days. So we, we are part of a bigger system. We are all connected more and more. And the current landscape in which we are is technologies, the Internet of Things, mobility, the cloud, big data, data and analytics, social collaboration. You know, all these technologies are disrupting entire industries. So I don't so I, I can more or less know where you come from because I saw your a, a bit of which companies you work uh, uh, before and you belong to one of these industries for sure, so most of you, I think. Um, and you can see how uh, all, all these industries are getting disrupted. The automotive, the transportation, the music industry, um, the, how we travel is changing completely. How we gather data, how we, how we sell to consumers, everything is changing because of all these, all these changes. So um, in this context, the other piece is, if you're making money, you are going to be disrupted. So whenever, so if you belong to an organization who is doing well, you are selling to someone, I can guarantee you there's someone in Silicon Valley trying to, or someone near you trying to capture that business. That, that's how it is. Um, so this looks pretty hairy. That's what I find when I go to organizations, the whole topic of change, the whole topic of 
you know, in a way why things are not just like they were. And I think that that's very important. If things were like just they were, maybe there's not that much need to change unless we have an interest to evolve. You know, and, and remember, many things during, during thousands of years were more or less the same. So the, the, I would, what I would say is the speed of change is the big difference these days. So just remember that 20 years ago, we didn't have internet. So that's the moment in which we are. And 100 years ago, we didn't fly you know, through the oceans you know, and could connect you know, continents. So all this is happening at a, at a speed that is creating, uh, in, in a way that is um, uh, uh, our brain is not, is not adapting fast enough to that change. So that's why it looks pretty heavy. So this is what I found, you know, or we found that uh, most companies or most organizations or most people are talking these days about. So everyone wants speed, agility, whatever you call it. Um, everyone wants more innovation. So no matter which company, we, you know, I work with, they in a way say some of the things or all of this together. So no matter the industry. Uh, we, we need more collaboration. We need to break the silos. You know, we need to put the teams to work in a more customer centric way. So they need to come together, uh, but at the same time, they don't work in the same office anymore. We want people to be more courageous. You know, we need the new ideas, the new things. So these are the things that most companies, again, no matter which industry, are talking about. And the other thing that is very interesting is that in today's world, it's not like 50 years ago when, we, when people go to work and they were just expecting to get in at, six, at, at 9 a.m., leave at 6 p.m., and that was your time for work and all the other things you do it outside. Today, everyone is talking about work-life integration, you know, or different ways of calling the integration of the mind, the heart, the body, and the spiritual part of our thoughts. So we want to express who we are at work. And most and most companies, and all of us, we are demanding that from the places where we are at. So I hope all this story makes sense, but I wanted to create the context. Um, and I, I assume that you can tell me um, uh, later if, if this makes sense. But I think this is at least what we are founding, working with many companies around the globe, which are the, th the most common things that are happening in the context and what people are, demand are demanding from the organizations and what organizations are demanding from people. So the question I have for all of you, and this is the time where we start the, I would say the, the work together, is please think about this. Take a minute, I'm gonna pause for a minute, and just try to answer this question to yourself. So one thing that I, that, that I want to share is, I've been talking about organizations, the world, now I'm gonna get much more into our individual situations, let's say. Why do we want to change? What do we want to change? Um, and then we will connect it back to organizations. But I, I, I will use as, a, as the, I would say, the resource we have to work, each, each of us. We don't have here the organization, but we have each of us. Then we can extrapolate that and link it to the teams and organizations. So the question is, what do you want to change about yourself to be more capable, happier, and feeling better shape for what's coming? And really think of, think of something that you think is gonna make a difference in your life. It's gonna be a quantum leap in a way. You say, oh yes, if I'm better at this, everything will, will be better. Okay, I, I will assume for a second that you already have it. If you don't have it, it's good if you find it <laughs> soon. Um, but I, I will keep going from here. What I think is very important, I, I would say, or my suggestion for the presentation is that you, if you keep this in mind, everything will be easier. Because that, that's another thing that is, for me today, there's a trend that we all need to change everything, you know, and people go through, uh, you know, go to new events and, and they belong to organizations, they get new trainings. And we assume that it's true that we need to change on everything. And one of the key issues we're going to talk about is that that's one of the problems, the lack of focus and the lack of really, you know, thinking this is the thing that is going to make a difference and trying to change 10 things at the same time. One of the key reasons why it's so hard to change. Because we are, we are scattered, we are thinking of many different things and not focus on the right things that are going to really make a difference. 
And that's true for people, for individuals, that's true for teams, and that's true for organizations. So I hope you, you find something. Um, let's, let's take it from here. So this is the moment where my presentation can last 20 more seconds, okay, with, the, with what's gonna come. So because the answer is very simple to this question. Just do it. So usually when I, when I put this, you know, I, I cannot see you now, but I don't know to, now is, if, if you hate me or if you are smiling to it, but actually it's true. You know, if you know what you want to change, just do it. It's as easy as, as I'm saying it. Now, that's how it looks, but it's not that way. I know it. That's why we are all discussing these days. It's a trending topic. Why is it so hard to change? So let me start um, uh, trying to reveal why it's so hard. You know, what the research says and what we found working with many uh, individuals around the world. The first reason is because, and this is my inference, I'm going to be a bit challenging with you today. So you, you take it or leave it depending on where you are. You know, again, I cannot see your faces. And, um, but the, the, the first thing is that you, uh, not you, all of us, we are expecting a magic wand. We're expecting the pill that is going to make us change what we want to change. So we want the change to be easy, to be fast, and that, that it doesn't take a lot of effort from us. And we are still expecting that one day that will happen. So the question is, why is it so hard to change? Why is not with a magic wand? So the main reasons I found is first thing is the confusion between being knowledgeable about something, so meaning reading about something, and being able to. So this is the question I always ask. So if you need to you know, I don't know, the one who has kids, or if you have a niece or a nephew, you know, anyone you know, or, or kids from your friends, if you don't have your, your, your own kids. So who would you trust to take care of your kids while they are swimming in the pool? Someone who read all the books about swimming, or someone who has been rescuing people and swimming every day for the last 10 years? So the answer is pretty obvious. But that's not how we operate every day. Usually, we confuse knowledge and reading about things with the capacity to do things. So that's why we go to trainings. You know, and so now, now I'm going to show it to you. That's the second one. That is how we learn. So if we are, I would say, more than even today, actually, but more than 30 years old, you know, this is how we learn. Uh, when we're at school, but this is also how we learn today in many organizations. So we have someone giving a master class telling us what we should be doing, and then we believe that then we can do it. So it's, very, it's more or less the same than reading a book. And that's true in some cases. I'm not saying that that's not true in some cases. We want to see when is it true, depending on the level of challenge and when it's not. Um, so the, the how we learn has nothing to do with how we apply things later. So we, we, we isolate the places for learning instead of doing things on the job when things really happen. The third one is that we still have organizations and systems, even the educational system still, although it is changing in some places. That is from the, you know, from the time this movie was, was built, you know, in, in, in the 50s. You know? so, so we, we still have organizations that didn't adapt or I would say organizations is not only companies, it's also our educational system, it's also um, our, the, the, the way we, uh, we, we operate. There are for a time that doesn't exist anymore. So let me show you also how this works um, from a habit change standpoint. So I'm gonna put a little video on this. Um, it's not the full one, I can share the full one later. Hey, Fran, this is Barbie. We cannot hear the sound, so I wonder if you have to turn up the audio oh, and restart. Can I hear the sound? Oh, can you hear me, Barbie? I can hear you, but we cannot hear the sound on the video. 
Okay, that's not good. <laughs> so let me see. Uh, I don't know how to do that. So what, what do you suggest? I wonder if the volume on your computer needs to be all the way up or check the little volume button on the side. Oh no, that's, I think that's fine. We can try it. If not, I will skip the video, so don't worry. Uh, but you know, when I can share later, let me see computer. So, uh, I don't know. Let me try again and then you tell me if it works. If it doesn't work, we, we just, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, let me see if it works. If it did not, we skip the video and I share it, okay? Can you hear it? No, we still have no audio. Okay, so then, then I don't know how to do it. Let me see. Uh, anyway, then I would skip the video. <laughs> Okay, and I will share the story. I think it's going to be easier unless, unless you know the solution. I suggest you share what he talks okay. about in the video. Good. Okay, so th th then we can send you the video to all of you. So very quickly, this guy made a... So I I'm going to share the story while, while, while I put the video so you can see what he's doing. So actually, what, what he did is what he did was there were some engineers who turned and now you're going to see it change the gears change the way that this is uh, that this is built and the reason i'm putting this is because we all have been said uh, and this guy did this uh, because of that that it's just like riding a bicycle you know so we know how to ride a bicycle so now you're going to see what they what they uh, did to him and what he's saying is that none of us can ride this bicycle so what they did was when he turned left the bicycle will go to the right. And when you turn right, the bicycle will go to the left. It's just a simple change in the engineer, how you engineer this bike. And now you're gonna see him trying to ride it for the first time. Yeah, so that's, that's the experiment. So look, look what happens when he tries to, that, to do it. Yes, so as simple as that. So, in a way, what, what he's sharing here is he's not a dumb guy who kind of do these type of things. He's very, um, uh, his brain is pretty wired for, for that. So, let me pause there. That's what he does. Um, so, the question is um, that I want to put as the next slide, let's say. So, I'm going to skip this. Um, give me one second. Eh? Because now I'm, I'm so... Barbie, now I think you can take it. So the question is, how long it took this guy? Because that's, that's the experiment he has, and then you will see the full experiment. How long it took to this guy to be able to ride the bicycle in the new way? Yes? So here you have the options. This is a poll. Now, Barbie, you can explain how, how it works and how, how people can, can do it. But the question is, he, did, he said he practiced for five minutes each day. How long it took him to rewire his brain to be able to ride the bike uh, in the new setting? Yes, yeah, so people can click to vote and people are voting. We already have 50% of the votes in. So let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, I think I will give 10 more seconds. I think there's the poll. Okay, good. So, Barbie, shall I, I, can I? I you think can close we are done, the poll. No? Yeah. So I can move on. Okay, so what you said is 12% one week, 35% between one week and one month, and 42% between one and three months, and 12% more than three months. So here's the answer. You cannot, you cannot hear it, but I'm going to share it with you. Um, you're going to see how, how he does it, what it happened after eight months. Okay, so this is after eight months, this happened. He was able to do it. And what he shares in that video is that even if the mobile 
in a way, um, uh, uh, the sound of the mobile or something, you know, you, you get the vibe of the, of, the, of the mobile, you get distracted, he would fall. So what this is saying is that for him to rewire the brain from an old habit, something we learn since we were kids, like almost everything we, we know, it took eight months of five minutes every day until he could get it. When we send you the video, it's a seven minutes video in total, okay? You will see that he did the same with his kid. I'm gonna share with you the answer, but you can imagine that the answer about his kid is much lower because of the neuroplasticity in his brain. So, what, I'm, what I want to share now is, is in a way, depending on the level of challenge, we might need different solutions. And that's something we all get very confused with. So there's a first level of challenge that is, I hear it, I understand, and I can implement. So that's okay when you read a book. And let me tell you something, there's nothing more dangerous to me than someone who says, I already know it, I attend the webinar, I attended the call, I read the book, you know? So the question is not if you understood it, the question is, can you do it? And that's one of the biggest confusion in all the things we do when we try to train ourselves. So this is like saying, I read a book about how to get a new language, but then you need to go to that new country and speak the language. So how many times we say, what I've been, so I, I, I learned French when I was a kid or a teenager, six years. I can tell you when I go to Paris, I, I cannot say more than a couple of things because I don't understand how they speak differently from from the teacher, so all these things happen. So the first level is hear it, understand and implement. And that happens many times. So I'm not saying by reading a book or by listening to a concept, we cannot apply something tomorrow. Now I'm gonna show you some, some examples of those. Then you have a level two challenge. That is, I hear it, I understand it, requires effort, but I need to start practicing and start implementing. But I can do it by myself, okay? So it's, this is the kind of things that is, you know, and, and even I was thinking of, you know, let's say that you have an apple tree, you know, and you go at the beginning of the season where the apples come, you know, you, you, you are one of the first one coming, you can just get the low hanging fruits, let's say, very easily. You know, but once people pass by, you know, you need to stretch a bit yourself and maybe climb a little bit to get the apples that are higher there in the, in the, in that, that's the level two. Now the level three is where you hear it, you understand it, it requires practice, but you realize that you need support. You cannot do it by yourself. So that's the moment where you need someone to, you know, hold you, where you need someone to help you, you know, with some indications or to even, you know, be, be, be a, a coach or a feedback. So now we're going to see that. So one of the big issues that I see mostly is that, is, is the following. Let me explain it in this way. Whenever we hear all of us about a new concept, so this is the access is capacity from bottom to bottom up and then times in days from left to the right. Yes. And capacity meaning 10, I'm an expert. One is I'm at the lowest level. So usually we hear a concept. Yes. And we believe that on day one, we master it. Start thinking of you, you or any colleague of you, because usually it's easier to see with other people. You know, they attended a session, oh yes, you know, how to, how to speak with honesty and respect, how to um, uh, be more agile in the way I work. You know, I need to do excellence. And, and so you believe you are very good at the day after, but that your colleagues are not. So, or that they need it. So that's the level one, now, now you're gonna see. Now the truth is that this is the curve of learning. Mainly for level two and level three, you're gonna see it now. So the question I ask you, is and you keep it to to yourself but it's the question i ask you i don't know if, if i think you can put comments there if you can i don't know barbie if people can do that you can just share it so how many days it takes based on the research to acquire a new habit now forget about the five minutes eight months for the bike that was example for the bike but in general what the research says about how many days it takes for any of us to acquire a new habit to rewire our brain so automatically we start doing the new thing. So what, what do you think that would be? So the answer is 66 days. 
that's the time and you can look at this also i think someone who has a it's a very good book atomic um habits from james clear he has this research you know 66 days is what it takes for us to acquire a new habit to get into a new learning to be able to do it in a way that becomes more automatic you know to the way we react to things so again level one it's okay for the things that are as simple as hearing a concept like you know it could be um i travel to a new place and i need to get to know the area around you know my hotel you know that's pretty okay in one day you just walk around you know where to buy certain stuff you know it's fine that's okay but if you need to learn a new language because you're going to stay there and you need to evolve on that you're not going to learn the new language the day after so you will really need to understand even the culture so and i would say the language depending on you what you did before could be a level two or a level three but usually it's a level three you need support you need a coach you need someone to help you you know you need someone to give you feedback again uh, you can do it by yourself depending on on how many languages you speak before how similar it is you know some people are also out your own capacity now again what i want to state very clearly is that the main problem is that we all confuse level one with level two with level three challenge and whenever we see something our brain goes directly to think this is a level one problem so my my suggestion to you is that next time you hear about anything you would like to change about you would like to evolve you would like to acquire you you think to yourself is this a level one let me go back to this is this a level two I can do it by myself, but it will require practice or would I need support? And now let me go into the issue why it's hard to respond to that question also. So, because we have blind spots, you know, we, we, we don't see things clearly because we have our own cognitive biases, even about ourselves, about our colleagues, about what we are capable. So the 66 days, I also want to relate it with this concept that Shona Shapiro, who is a, uh, uh, one of the main teachers on mindfulness and all her research, which is fantastic. I, I suggest you get into that and you, you, we're going to send you her tech talk too. She, she says, what you practice grows stronger because her research shows and the research shows that um, the more you practice something over time, and this is the connection with the 66 days, you rewire your brain. We, you can, we can all do it. So there's some research about the, uh, London taxi drivers, cab drivers, you know, and about and how they have developed their brains in a way that they can, uh, because they need to remember the, the, the streets of London. So, so the, the, their, the, the moment you do research on their brains is different from many of us because they develop that. So we can rewire our brain, but it takes practice. And one of the things that is very important about her research is whatever you are practicing, all of us grow stronger. And what she says is when you practice the wrong things too, when you practice the, the habits that are not good for you, you are also growing them stronger. So even in her TED talk, she shares, when you are in a way um, uh, um, blaming people and not liking people, that's what's growing on in your mind. That's how your brain is being developed. When you start connecting to people and assuming good intent from people, that's how you will automatically start reacting to things when they happen. So it's just an example, okay? But, but remember, we are always practicing. The question is, are we practicing the things that will put us in the right track for the things we want to evolve and change? Or are we practicing the opposite? But whatever you are doing, you are practicing. So this for me is, whatever you do, is gonna help you grow something. So the question then is, how can we, and this is the moment you need to respond, you know, wherever you responded at the beginning that you want, um, become, you know, or be better. And the answer is by changing the way we think, we talk, and we do things. That's the only way, in a repetitive way. So if we change the way we think, we talk, and we do things, they will become the new norm. They will become the new way. But it will not happen with a magic wand. So let me go a bit deeper into how this works and how we, in a way, operate. So whatever we are getting in our lives is a result of what we do every day. 
So there's no way out. Whatever we are doing, the way we are, we are working with others, co-creating with others, or creating within ourselves, that's the, you know, the result we get. And whatever we do is, in a way, a representation or a, a way to show how we see the world, what our beliefs are. So it's not the same to have certain mindsets than others. Now we're going to get into that. So, for example, if you believe that people are good in general, then you will treat people in that way, and that's how you will act, and then you will get results based on that. I'm not saying always good, but I'm saying it's different that if you have a belief that people are not good, and then you are always scared, checking what they will do, what could happen to you, that's the way you will act, and that's the results you will get. Again, sometimes they will work, sometimes they, they don't. The question is what do you want? And I'm not saying it's one extreme or the other, but I think you, you're, you're getting the, the sense of, of what I'm talking about. So the connection between one and the other. So the question is, what, what are the mindsets and beliefs that are going to put us in the right track, that are going to help us or be more conductive for the changes we want? So this is the, the question I want to ask you, because it's one of the key things. So what is it that it can be really big, but you can't touch it? It, it often gets in the way, but you can see it. What is it? Because this is the main source of the difficulties we all have to change. And the main issue, one of the main blockers is our own ego. Because we are trying to protect who we are, how we are seen by others, and then it's impossible to evolve. Because the only way out, in a way, to do new things. So this is like, let me go back to the riding the bike. That's why I love that video. So all of us, let, I, let's assume that you know, most of us know how to ride a bike. So, and we know how, how we got there. We fall 100 times. And at that time, maybe we were not, it was not funny for us, but maybe for our parents. You know, but there's no way out. We need to do be, I would say, open to failure, to fail, to, to fall, in order to create any transformation or evolution. There's no way. So, for example, with learning a language, you know, I, I went through this, you know, so through, through that. And the only way is to be exposed to feedback, to people telling you, this is the way you say this. this is so at least you will improve much faster. But it's so hard to do because we are protecting something. And again, I can, we, we can send you some uh, things about vulnerability and the power of vulnerability for creating change. But when you are a leader in an organization, when you're a family member, when you're recognized by certain things, that's when it becomes very hard. So the first thing is, if you want to create change on certain deep things, you need to work with your ego. You need to, to ask him to be okay with it. So the other question is, what kind of mindset do you have? So what kind of message do we have? Because we were wired, because of how we learn, and the, what I showed you before, to, so think of organizations in the past, I don't know, 100 years maybe, so, but in the last 30 years, school, you know, we were uh, recognized by knowing. And that created what, what uh, Carol Dweck, that I think she did a fantastic work on this, she called the fixed mindset. We call it in accent the, the knower, let's say, mindset. But I will, I will connect with, 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 the, with this mindset. So, so, and then you have the growth mindset. So how do you want, so if you want to change, evolve, be able to do things as an individual, as a team, or as an, organi or as an organization, you need to, we need to work on moving from how we were wired and the culture we were in since we were kids that is more connected to a fixed mindset to really open up a new whole world. And that's a hard thing to do by itself. So what is it a fixed mindset? So is it when we think I'm either good at it or I'm not? But then the growth mindset, it says I can learn anything I want. Yes? So it means I'm open for, to new things. Then when I'm frustrated, I give up. When I'm frustrated, I persevere. I don't like to be challenged, that's a fixed mindset. And now start thinking about yourselves and the people around you. Who wants to be challenged? Do you smile when you're being challenged? Or do you say, why the hell you are challenging me? At least inside of you, don't matter what you show. 
So I want to challenge myself. When I fail, I'm not good, as I was saying. When I fail, I learn. Tell me I'm smart. Tell me I try hard. If you succeed, I feel threatened. This is the competitiveness. If you succeed, I'm inspired. So think of an organization. Think of a team. Think of a group of people working together where people can learn anything they want. They, when they are frustrated, they persevere. They challenge themselves. When they fail, they learn. You know, they try hard. And if someone else succeeds, they feel inspired. They feel there's more possibilities. And then also, uh, my ability determines who I am in a way, you know, everything. And my effort and attitude determine everything. So again, this is just two different ways of approaching life. And again, I think we have been wired and we learn how to become fantastic fixed mindset people. But now we're asking everyone to change and to evolve and to move fast and to be more agile, you know, and then how we can do that from that place. There's no way. So I love this phrase from a colleague of mine, you know, I'm my own innovation project. For me, this is the key thing to drive change in our lives. This is the key mindset that will create a change. If we see ourselves as a never ending innovation project, if we treat ourselves like I'm constantly experimenting. This is what life is about. You know, I will focus on progress over time. And I always desire to learn new things. That's what life is about, actually. So if, if I'm, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years old, and I learn everything already, we, we know that's not true, actually. So let's stop pretending. So, and actually, who do you want to work more with? With people who are always trying to learn new things, who are, who are curious, who are trying to get new stuff, or for people who are always telling you how things should be. Well, that's also the same for people working around us. And again, I know it's easy to say, hard to do. So I'm gonna go more now into how to do it. How do you get there? And I'm gonna give you, again, some tips. I will try to do this in no more than 10 minutes. So then we can move into Q&A. So how do we get there? How in a way we start developing that learner mindset, that growth mindset, that I am my innovation project? So, the first thing is catch yourself right. This is my hypothesis. I've been testing this with my, in many you know, sessions I did. So think of a time that you, so maybe in the last few months, take a minute to think of a successful change you have made in your life. Because my hypothesis is that you know how to do it, actually. You know how to start getting much more into that mindset, into that place. And as I said, that's what we need to develop. So I'm going to give you 10, 15 seconds. Think of something, you know, uh, that you were successful to change. Something very specific. So now the question is, you have a story. What makes it work and stick? So what, why that time was different? Why you were able to do it with that? And I'm going to share now, and I hope it, it connects with your experience. If not, you will tell me also and you can ask your questions. But I will tell you what my experience and my experience with my colleagues working at Accident says about what makes it stick and what makes it, make it work. So the first thing is, I love this story. So let's say that you have five frogs by the shore of a lake. And two of them decide to jump into the lake. How many frogs you still have by the shore after that? So I don't know what you are thinking, but most people say three. But the answer is five. Because there's a big difference between deciding to jump into the lake and actually doing it. And that's exactly one of the problems, procrastination. We always make decisions, but we don't implement them. So whenever you made a change, you stop procrastinating and you say, I'm gonna start right now. Not tomorrow, not the day after, right now. That's the first thing. The second thing is you put it in your agenda. So today we all work with calendars. We have meeting requests, we have calls, we have, so that's how we work. Even we put our social life 
many times in our calendars. Whatever you don't have in your calendar will not happen. And if you don't put in your calendar, it's because it's not more re as relevant as you're saying. So let me tell you a tip. So if I want to meditate because I think that's good for me, I put it in my calendar, it's there. If I want to train, you know, I go for a run, it's in my calendar. Because then people know I have something to do at that time. And I know I have something to do at that time. And if I need to change it, then I move it, but I don't just pretend that it was never there. So putting in your, in your agenda is critical. The, the other thing is you need to find a coach. A coach meaning anyone who can support you. So whenever I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the level three challenges. The level ones, you can manage. Level two, I assume more or less two. And whenever you cannot, it's because it's a level three one. So you need to find support. Sometimes it's a body pair, sometimes someone who is working with you, who attend meetings with you. Sometimes it's maybe a relative, a family member, your, um, so whoever. Now, what is very interesting about this is that whenever we ask someone to call us out and to give us feedback, you know, this is like the personal training. You know, when, when you want to train and you know, you know for, for anything and you know that, you know, or you are going to a diet, that is the, the typical one. You know, if you have support or someone telling you, you know, remember, you said this, you said that, you know, well, no, let's cook this. So then you have someone who is helping you. But the, the, the very interesting thing about this is that when, we, when someone calls us out, and make us pay attention to what we said, we first get annoyed. So pay attention to that because that's what's gonna happen. That's the moment to breathe and say thank you. Because whoever is supporting us, they are not doing what they want, they are doing what we told them to do to help us. So that's the third one, find your coach. And now I'm gonna make a, sorry, a suggestion to all of you. To, to keep it simple, I start with something. That is, there's something called Keystone Habit. And again, we can send you some more research about this. And a Keystone Habit, and we have this picture because Keystone Habit comes from the idea of the Keystone that is supporting everything. That is, my suggestion on how to change and evolve is that you need to start small, small with very little things until you get in your 66 days of that. It's the five minutes every day until you make it. If you can then do more, that's perfect. But one of the issues is that we, we always are thinking about the end game and we never start. So a keystone habit is something that mostly create a direct correlation with everything we want to change, but we know that will put us in a much better place. So let me give you an example, a personal example of this. That is, I found that there are two things that help me to make my day much better to be much more concentrated, to be much more focused. I would try three things. One is what I eat. You know, for me, it's not the same what I, what, I, what I put in my body, let's say. So before a very important meeting, if I eat certain things, you know, I get asleep. I don't, I don't I'm not like, like, you know, um, so for me, that's carb, carbs, you know, carbohydrates. For other people, it might be other things. You know, but what I, what I intake every day is one thing. Um, the second thing for me is, having some one mini meditation, maybe three or four times during the day that I put in my calendar, it's time to pause, to just, just take a minute to breathe. And I know, and that's the feedback I receive, that people experience me in a much better, because one of the feedback maybe I got was, you're always too accelerated. So let's pause for a second, let's breathe. And then the next two hours, I'm in a completely different space. Uh, and the other, the other thing for me is to make sports. You know, for me, having, activity you know every morning or in the afternoon doing something even biking biking to my my, the, my workspace it creates a relaxation in my body that is helping me much more focused and much more present in my meeting so i'm telling you things that are pretty easy things to do so a keystone habit is something that is easy to do on your own that you can do for at least five minutes every day and that will create a positive change in general in your life so maybe I would say even the last thing I would request to you is, can you please think about one thing that meets these criteria? That you can, and I don't care if it's the perfect thing. What I think is, is the way out from the problem of how we change is in this. 
Because if we start doing this every day, then it becomes a new routine, a new habit. And then from here, we can take it to the next level. So I'm going to give again 30 seconds for you to think about something like this. OK, and now there's a key concept that for me is very important for creating change. And the concept is 1% better every day. So I always put the same example because the one that fits me, but you can, you can uh, in a way, uh, relate it to your own examples. When I train to run a marathon that I know is, a, is an example that many people put these days. So the way to do it is that you increase the miles you run once every week, but very little. So then you don't notice. It's like moving from 10K to 10K and a half or to 11K, you know? So this is the same. It's like saying, okay, you know, I'm going to cut, I don't know, that's also another personal example. I'm going to cut sugar. You know, maybe I will not cut it altogether, but I will put half spoon less on this. So it, it's just my example, okay? Find yours. But the key thing is, I, I love a phrase from, from a colleague of mine, a friend, Nitya Shanti, who says, we usually overestimate what we can do in three years, but we underestimate what we can do in one year. So don't forget that in order for you to be much better on something in three months from now, you just need to do 1% better every day. So you will not make it today. You will make it in 66 days, more or less. But in 66 days, I can guarantee you, you will, you will be a completely different person on that topic that you decided to change if you did it repeatedly. 1% every day. So just a summary. Do something you would like to change. Don't procrastinate. That's a key thing. <laughs> Start somewhere. Put it in your calendar. Find someone to support you. Have an accountability buddy. And again, think of the 1% better every day. So the last thing I want to share before we, we, we go to questions is um, these are monks, Buddhist monks, you know, walking um, and what they do every day, actually. And I love this quote, you know, um, what it says is, before alignment, chop wood and carry water. And after alignment, chop wood and carry water. So there's no magic wand. That's the main thing that I would love for you to take from this. The only way out is to practice, do what you believing that it's going to take you there, have a body to help you out when you are not, and giving them permission to give you feedback, and do the work until it becomes the new norm. And my suggestion would be don't try to do more than one at a time, because that's another source of frustration. And this can be applied to individuals, teams, organizations. It's exactly the same. I'm tired, let me put it this way, and I'm going to say it strongly, of going to organizations and actually asking me to give a keynote on something, expecting that something will change the day after about these type of things. And I'm telling them, you need to move from events to processes for change, to helping people create that change in their real life situations, 1% better every day. But I can tell you, after three months, more or less, you're going to see a big difference. But at the beginning, you will not notice. So you saw the 66 days um, exponential curve. The last thing I want to share is, is um, um, this picture. I always love this story that is, um, I, I think we all seek perfection. And we all seek uh, the perfect plan. And I love this picture because the, the story, are, for me, that I, that I share about this is, if you, um, let's say depart from Barcelona, where I am today, and you are in a flight to, um, let's say, um, Argentina, where I'm originally from, and you deviate one degree to the left, let's say 10 minutes after you depart, where do you think you land? You don't land in Argentina. You might maybe land in South Africa, I think. I don't know exactly the mathematics of that, but maybe that's where you will land. What it means is, Whatever change you start doing, 
that you deviate one degree to the right, you are already in a new trajectory. So don't think that if you start making a change and you don't make it perfect and you don't go all the way, you are not changing something. I can guarantee you, you are in a new trajectory. And that's why I think it's always good to start anywhere and to do something because that by itself will be an experience that will inform who you are, how to do it, how to make it better next time. And you will definitely arrive somewhere else than the original trajectory you were at. So thank you all. Um, that's everything I wanted to share. Again, happy to um, share more, maybe follow up on with some more information. But thank you all for being here and I hope you enjoyed and you got some value from it.